What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I was tagged by Solomon's Vineyard by way of Nosy Neighbor. Shout outs to both of them. And the tag's actually a pretty easy one for me. Uh, I've, I've revisited this topic a few times and it never gets old for me. Um, so it's five fragrances that started my fragrance journey. And there's five very specific ones. It was real easy for me to go run grab them off the shelf because these very pivotal fragrances for me at different stages for different reasons which we'll cover throughout the video so i appreciate the tag but let's get into it So I guess we'll go in chronological order because a lot of you've heard this story that the one for me that started it all, the first fragrance I ever really wanted was Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger. Now this is my most recent bottle. I finished a 30 ml not that long ago and opened this 50 ml. I do have another sealed 30 ml on top of this. I've had many bottles of this over the years. I want to say it was 1995, 1996, right around sixth grade, whichever year that was. This was the first fragrance I ever asked for for Christmas. Tommy Hilfiger was booming in the mid-90s. It blew up. This, I mean, we're talking before the little flag was their logo. The old logo that was kind of similar to the Bugle Boy logo. People my age remember that and know what I'm talking about. I might have unlocked a memory for you just now. Holy crap, I forgot about that logo. During that time, Tommy was popping. Umbro shorts. Yes, Umbro, the soccer brand. Nike was popping. Obviously, Reebok was still like in full effect during the mid-90s. But Tommy, Tommy Hilfiger, blew up on the scene during that time frame. And that's what we were wearing. That's what we were after, more so than Ralph Lauren Polo during that time. That was a thing, too. Ralph Lauren Polo <laughs> always been hot. But Tommy Hilfiger clothes and this fragrance. I had to have this fragrance. Now, it is a bit of a shell of its former self, but... Still has a lot of elements of the original, that kind of bitter, green, spicy, citrus. It's a little powdery and woodsy. Doesn't last all that great. Maybe like three hours on skin these days for me, but I don't care. I just spray it. It lasts how it's going to last, and I spray it again. So nostalgic. 90s in a bottle for me reminds me of my childhood. And yes, that long ago. It's been that long ago, at that age, around 10 or 11 years old, that I could appreciate fragrance for what it was and it completing a wardrobe and so on, that sixth grade, I wanted a gift set that came with the Tommy Hilfiger duffel bag for Christmas of Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger. So the next one was I wanted something different for school dances because back then we used to have school dances at the Lease Park Gym every Friday. Every Friday night during the school year with school dances and all the different, you know, elementary schools and junior highs and everything would go to the dance. And uh, I wanted something different, stepping out a little different from what you wear on the norm, on a regular basis. And this fragrance always spoke to me as if money. Maybe it's the relation to green and gold. Like I said, Ralph Lauren was popping, not just the clothes, but the fragrance too. But the original polo. So it, it hurts my heart a little bit when people call this an old man fragrance because I was a young, very, very young man. I was a child when I used to wear the 40 ml that I had way back when. Back when four ounce bottles like this were like 85, 90 bucks retail. Gift sets you could get a little cheaper with the gift, usually a bag and stuff like that. But I used to wear the hell out of this when I was like 12. <laughs> you know, this is good stuff. Again, a little bit of a shell of its former self, but it's still that piney green, dry tobacco, aromatic smell. I've always related it to money, the aroma and the color scheme, gold and green, like I said before. Uh, it still performs really well. This bottle's like three years old. It's not super old, three, three and a half years old. It's, so it's a relatively newer formulation. I very much still enjoy it. I don't wear it all that often. I kind of just have it to have it for nostalgic purposes, but... This one mattered all the way into junior high because I did get another bottle. This uh, <laughs> this was my school dance fragrance of choice because then when we moved, because I moved and I went to Evergreen for seventh grade, uh, we had school dances that year and 
and then uh, Home Junior High and all that good stuff. Sadie Hawkins, all the different theme dances. I mean, think back to when you were a kid. It was something to do. The weekends mattered a whole lot more back then than they do now. At least uh, for kids. I, I'm not a kid in today's age, but based on what I see, weekends are different for them than they were for us. We we got out in the world and there was no communication devices and shit. We just, we just had a good old time. And fragrances like this remind me of that. Pivotal stuff in my journey. The original Ralph Lauren Polo. This next one, I only had a 50 ml bottle, a smaller bottle, or it might have been a 40 ml, something like that. I had the smallest bottle years ago because this came in hot on the scene. Everybody wanted this fragrance. This was the thing from the mid 90s on. Still super hot seller. Aqua de Jo. No two ways about it. Monumental stuff right here. This was the king of the freshy. Yeah, I think of king, all time, king of the fresh fragrances. Let me let's call it what it is. Never gets old. Wife still loves it too. Um, man, <laughs> I remember going in the mall smelling this at Dillard's over and over until I got it that Christmas. I want to say I was thirteen or fourteen when I got a bottle of this, something like that. I might have been fourteen, fifteen. Might have been close to that. More mid teens. When I got my first bottle of this, and uh, yeah, because this was a little bit more expensive than getting Tommy, um, and then I had was I on my second bottle yet of Polo? Because I just would wear it to school dances, so it wasn't something I wore all the time. I don't remember if I was on my second bottle of Polo yet, but man, this was that jam. You want to talk about compliments? Even to this day, it still gets tons of compliments. But back way back when. When this was first the hot fragrance on the scene, man, it, the, an icon was born in the mid-90s. But this Giorgio Armani, this funded the brand over the last couple of decades. But at least that's how it seems because they just sold so many bottles. They got so many people hooked on this fragrance. Uh, aquatic green, basically how you look at it, synthetic cologne, typical 90s smell. That cologne smell, full of synthetics, watery florals musk woods heavy on the musk and greens spicy greens like rosemary basil kind of thing i forgot exactly what notes are in here there's tons of different stuff but not too heavy on the citrus but like a green aquatic if you will green aquatic musk kind of the main things you get from this one and i still get decent performance i don't care what anybody says they might talk about how weak it is and everything probably just going nose blind all the heavy synthetics but i get like seven or eight hours out of this fragrance still and this is a pretty new bottle it's only a few years old but Pivotal Fragrance had to be featured. This stuff really mattered way back when. The original Giorgio Armani. Why is it not focusing? Come on now. I want to focus before. Uh, there we go. This is such a beautiful frosted bottle. Giorgio Armani, Aqua de Joe. Now, now, there was a time when I got away from Tommy for a while as my regular. I was ready for the switch up. And that's when I got into Nautica. This is a vintage bottle. And I had Nautica competition, the original Nautica competition, the gray bottle with the blue and everything. Because after I was heavy into Tommy, I got heavy into Nautica for several years. At junior high and high school, I wore the hell out of Nautica. Elementary school and the junior high was when I wore more Tommy Hilfiger clothing. But later junior high because junior high depending on where you go you, it's eighth eight, seventh eighth ninth it could be eighth ninth could be seventh eighth depends so where i went was seventh eighth ninth for junior high and uh and going into high school 10th 11th senior year 12th you know um i was real into nautica that was my jam and the fragrance came right along with it so this is a vintage one this is you know 22 23 24 years old something like that I have it just to have it, but the citrus note, citrus note's a little spoiled. It's a little sour to the top. After two minutes, doesn't matter. It settles into some florals, saltwater aquatic, nice and woodsy and musky. This is the classic, as it's called, the modern day reformulation of this. You can tell once again, this is a shell of what this is. This is true depth and everything. It's still a good fragrance. You can find vintage bottles. They're still good. I get asked all the time about fragrances expiring. This fragrance is every bit of 23 to 25 years old. After two minutes, the expired part's gone. The citrus opening. That's it. The citruses are usually first to go. 
and this is a cheap ass synthetic fragrance you know now granted i'm sure the oil qualities were much better back then than they are now but point being i wore the hell out of this i got away from tommy for a while and nautica was my jam for many years and i would always kind of go back to tommy and i still kind of go back to tommy and i wear nautica and it's like it's it's in me i wear nautica tommy polo that's like my main brands aside from the you know these graphic t-shirts these patriotic shirts and stuff that i wear when it comes to mid-level designer name brand stuff i'm and they're more affordable at the rack stores these days too that's a added bonus but nautica tommy hilfiger and ralph lauren polo mainly ralph lauren polo is my jam uh as i'm an i guess elder at these stages but yeah nautica very very pivotal stuff for me this was my tommy and the teen years if you will so nautica that was my jam now we're going to skip ahead to my early 20s very very early 20s like actually like 18 19 20 range because hell when this came out i was like 18 no i was 20 when this came out my uncle got it before me and i fell in love with this fragrance god it's every time he'd come around I was like you smell so damn good good lord and i had to have it i had to get a gift set it's still one of the greatest fragrances of all time to me. A lot of you have heard me talk about this being the most monumental, pivotal in my journey of all. Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. It's my most recent 40 ml. I've had, I've had several bottles over the years. I got this for like 11 bucks on clearance from Marshalls a few years ago. I was time to re-up a little bit. I don't wear it that much. Still love and appreciate I still say this is the best light blue. The original is still the best. Citrus, pepper, smoke, aquatic, airy, compliment machine. It's a factory. It churns them out, even to this day, from a lot of people, not just me. Beautiful fragrance. God, that smells so good. Beautiful, beautiful fragrance. So it, it was at this stage when I got to this one. It's like, you know what? I'm really into fragrance at this stage. At this point, I had 10 to 15 bottles on a regular basis on my dresser. And we're talking 05. Jesus, eight, 19 years ago at the recording of this? That's 19 years ago. There was no online fragrance community then. There was nobody to really talk to about it. It was more of a hush-hush hobby that I'm just really into fragrance. Um, but that was when I had the realization. Like, I, I just had to have this once I smelled it. And it wasn't necessarily for anyone else. It was for me to smell on me. It's always been that way for me when it comes to fragrance. I don't buy fragrances and try different scent profiles to see what others are going to say about how I smell. I want to smell me. I love to smell different aromas. I've always been like that. I've been like that since I was a child. Since I was like 9 or 10 years old. I've been like that. And this was the fragrance that made me realize just how much I was like that. That's why this one's so pivotal for me. So number five, it's through different stages, through different eras. As I was growing up, it has since then gone to an absurd level as you can tell as i'm about to turn 39 in a week from the recording of this video um but in through my 20s and everything i always had in the teens to 20 range of bottles at any given time even even when times were hard financially i'd wear stuff like adidas and nautica and um different cody fragrances like aspen and aspen discovery the long discontinued flanker was my jam for a while azaro chrome Fragrances like that, different stages, different financial situations, still smelling good all the time no matter what. That was always my thing. And fragrances like this, specifically this fragrance, is what made me realize it mattered that much to me. So, you want to blame the addiction, the reviews, and all the stuff that I do here on social media with fragrance, this is the fragrance to blame it on. Dolce & Gabbana, light blue. Well, that was the five, a little wordy, a little bit longer for a top five, but there's story behind each of these because they really matter. Really the five that matter the most in the long haul in the history of me and fragrance. Um, so I appreciate the tag. Uh, I'll have uh, Solomon's Vineyard tag down below. He knows he doesn't have a channel, but, uh, but Russell does. So I'll make sure to tag him, Solomon's Vineyard down below. And you know how I do tags. Those of you familiar with my tag videos, I'll leave it open. Any content creators that see this and want to do it, regardless of your format, if you're TikTok, IG, YouTube, whatever you're doing, you see this, you want to do it, tag your it, roll with it, have some fun with it. These are meaningful tags, so these are definitely fun to do. Love to hear the stories, as I hope some of the people watching this video love to hear mine, even if you've heard it before. Maybe it was good to hear it again, I don't know, who knows. 
But until next time, do me real quick a favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe because I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. What are some of those fragrances for you that kind of sparked the love for this? Because you love this. You're watching a content creator on YouTube that talks about fragrance on a daily basis. Yeah, so you're really in fragrance. Who else watches this kind of stuff? Let's be honest. And until next time, I will say if you happen to get your hands on any of the five most pivotal, most meaningful, meaningful for my fragrance journey, and you give them a spray now, I can't guarantee you'll thank me later, but if you have similar taste to me, you probably will. Have a good one, guys.